So this theorem is called Fubini's theorem. Yes, that is a very fun name to say. You should try it sometime. Fubini's theorem. Okay, so I'm going to draw a couple of, um, well, I'll start with one graph here. Whoa, okay, <laughs> that was a little stray line there. Okay, so we have our x, y, and z. And then, um, again, magic carpet. So some surface up here. That looked kind of cool. Um, all right, and let's say we have, I'm just going to make it simple again and go with the square slash rectangle thing, domain, right? So here's our domain. Um, it doesn't really matter about the specifics. I just want you guys to get the visual. So, and then draw the straight lines up, straight lines up until it hits the surface. So it'll hit here, or I'm guessing, um, something like that. Okay, and we'll be going down because it goes along the surface at the top there. Okay, so that was actually pretty good. Um, yes, so what we have is x going from a to b um, on the domain and y going from c to d. Okay, so this is our domain down here. So that's uh, domain d. Um, and then this is our f of x comma y. That's the, the curvature that you see here, the surface, right? So, let's write out um, what we've been doing, uh, like what we did on the last problem, right? So, let's say we did a to b and, and then c to d, and evaluating the double integral. So, that would mean c to d, the dy has to go first, because it has to be on the inside, like the c to d, and then dx is on the outside to go with the a and b, okay? So, we did, um, by doing the parentheses and doing everything on the inside first, Remember we held uh, x constant, x was constant on the first step. So what that means graphically is that x is a constant. So x is anywhere, x is something like this, okay? That would be x equals like two or whatever it was, okay? So that's this line. So what that essentially does for the whole graph is it cuts a slice out of it, okay? and in retrospect, I probably should have drew, drawn this like um, a loaf of bread because that just would have been really funny. But um, anyways, so do you see this slice in here that I just took out of um, the solid? Okay, so this is when x is a constant. So x equals some constant. All right. So that slices through this whole solid, this whole volume here. So that's when x is constant. And then, um, so that's the slice that we get. That's the area of it, okay? And then, um, once we get our g of x, which is inside the parentheses, okay, so this whole integral on the inside turns into some function of x. And then what we do, the outside part, this is where that comes in. This is step two, remember? Um, so then we just do the normal, like, single integral thing. And what that does is add up all of the slices when x goes from a to b. Okay, so you can visualize more slices and more and more and more, and they're all combining and added up to form this entire volume. Okay, so um, this is the first part of Fubini's theorem, kind of. It's like half of it. Um, now I'll draw the second half. All right, so I'm going to do my best to try to read. Oh, okay, try to redraw something like that. Um, okay, so we have something like this and like that, and then our domain on the bottom here. Okay, I can already tell you this is not going to turn out the same way. Um, all right, hold on. Something like that and something like that. Okay, so we have our A to B, same diagram. Now we're just going to use a different approach. Okay, so um, all right, give me some time here. I'm going to draw my graph. Okay, going straight up, hopefully. Whoa, that didn't even touch the line. Okay, all right, so we have our, oh, that was pretty bad. Okay, you get the idea. Um, something like that, again. Okay, yeah, the, <laughs> the, the first graph was a lot better. Um, so there's that. And now this time, um, let's slice it the other way. 
So what if we were to change the intervals or the change the bounds, like switch them, switch their places. So that also means we have to switch the dy and the dx because they have to follow the, the intervals that they correspond to. So the dx stuff or the x stuff is all going to be on the inside. Um, and the dy stuff or the y stuff is all going to be on the outside. Okay. So now let's look at um, what our graph looks like when we do this. So now we're going to be holding y constant first, so y constant in the first step, okay, because we're um, integrating with respect to x. So y constant, that would look something like this, slicing a line right through there. So what that would um, graphically look like is something like that. And the slice would go sideways, kind of away from us. Do you see that? Um, yeah, so that's what we would get here. So this would turn into, everything in parentheses here would turn into um, some function of y, right? And then we would have be left with our single variable integral, um, differentiating, or sorry, I keep saying differentiating, integrating with respect to y. So then that would give us the sum of all of the slices. So like here's another slice, right? And here's another slice and just visualize all of these slices in here being added up. And then that gives you your volume. So from that, um, Fubini's theorem, Fubini, Fubini's theorem um, says that uh, the double integral or the volume, um, the volume is the same uh, no matter which way way you okay hold on uh, which way you slice it okay first basically um, so mathematically this is what that looks like is what I kind of did before so we have this on the left side so this is when dy's or the y stuff is on the inside and the x stuff is on the outside so this is going to equal any time you switch the bounds and switch um, what you're integrating with respect to first and then second. Okay, and just remember um, the important thing here is that making sure all of your x stuff is together. Um, so it's either all on the outside or all on the inside um, and that your y stuff is together. So in this case, y's are all on the inside but on the right side, they're all on the outside. Okay, so just make sure the, the variables follow your um, differential. That's what these are called, or differentials. Differential. Differential. Yay, vocabulary in math. Okay. Um, all right, so now let's do an, exam an example of this. So let's say we're given um, 0 to 7 and then 1 to 4 of x squared plus y uh, dy dx. Okay, so um, in this example, we're just going, they just ask you to rewrite it. So rewrite um, by switching the variables, basically, by um, switching variables. So here we're just going to practice uh, making sure that all the x stuff stays together and all the y stuff stays together. So this is our f of x comma y. So that's not really affected by anything. It just stays there. And all of this stuff on the outside, that's the part that we're concerned with. That's what switches around. So um, as you can see on the outside, the 0 and the 7, these this interval here corresponds with x stuff. Um, and the 1 and the 4, which are on the inside with the dy, that corresponds to y stuff. Um, so if we switch these ones, then we basically just have to switch these as well. That's the whole concept behind this problem. Um, so what we're going to end up with is 1 to 4. So this is y stuff. So y stuff has to be on the outside. And then we have 0 to 7. So then we have dx here. And then, as I said before, the f of x, y, um, that just stays in the same place and is pretty much unaffected um, as of now. So this would be our answer. So basically, if you were to try to solve this problem, um, like solve it all the way through, 
you get the same answer from this original um, expression here as you would from this final one. Okay? All right. Uh, next topic. So um, next and last topic, actually. So now we're going to be going over product of functions. Now I want to show you how I want to know what it means to be on. 